Is that any good? So we've got a general election and everyone is scrambling around looking at tactical voting. I find it very confusing, personally not convinced that it works. Right, and I can see where you're coming from because we've got different websites, different sources making different recommendations. So we today are going to talk about which of these you can maybe have more faith in, which less, does it work at all? We're going to be your tactical voting guides. So I've been getting loads of text messages from friends or even colleagues have been asking me who to vote for. I feel like I have so much power that I shouldn't have. And uh, a lot of them, in fact all of them, live in marginal constituencies. And what they've been doing is looking at 2017 results, but then hearing different conflicting answers from these websites. So we really dug into this. Now, why now? Why is tactical voting happening now? It's because the two major parties, Labour and the Conservatives, haven't really been dominating the polls as much as they used to. Now, we've looked at polling data in the last two years, but really, we could go back quite a bit more in history. And what we would see, let's say this is like 50% of the vote, is that the Conservatives have been jostling for the top position for a while. Mm -hmm. More or less, this is what's been happening. We have the Conservatives at 42% in the most recent poll of polls. Yep. And Labour are at 29%. The Lib Dems have sort of re-emerged from obscurity and are now at 14%, yeah, yeah. so a bit lower than that. The Green Party Drop is three. also... The protagonist is, yeah, the Brexit Party. And they have They're gone on up six, to I think. 6%. And they had some big results in the European elections in May. Well, let's put the SNP in there. Apologies to the SNP. I think they're on about four, aren't they? So just like that. So this is the political panorama. It's all split. So it's no surprise that people are so confused. Right, because I guess, you know, back when we had a two-party system and it was fairly stable, you could just look at the last result and say, oh, it'll probably be something like that. Whereas now if we've got areas where the Lib Dems have gone up and Labour have gone down, you could actually have a situation where, let's say you're a Remainer and you, your strategy is to, you know, minimise the chance of the Tories winning in your seat. Obviously, what you want to do is vote for the party that is closest behind the Tories in your seat. Now, that may have been Labour last time, but if they've gone down a bit and the Lib Dems have gone up, it may not be the Lib Dems. And so, yeah, as you say, the issue is voters who are trying to vote tactically just don't know where their vote should go. So, luckily for them, there are loads of websites advising them, right? There are. So, in let's fact, see they're very if I can just grab another sheet. Another thing that's confusing paper. is their names because they all yeah. sound the same. Whack that one over there. So, we have tactical.vote, tactical vote, on a different colour on this one, .co.uk, tactical-vote.co.uk. God. Um, get voting. Org. And finally, on the Remain side, Remain United. So, is this just a Remainy thing, tactical voting, or Brexiteers do it too, so you, surely, right? Right, so you could be confused for thinking this is only Remainers, but we did find one pro sort of pro Brexit um, tactical voting site, which is called OneUK.org. Um, so, yeah, there's a I lot going on. I found that one quite amusing because the results were something like 360 seats for the Conservatives, yeah. 160 for Brexit, Brexit and 60 for UKIP, then one Independent, one Labour. So it was something like that. Yeah. It was very crazy. I mean, if everyone yeah. follows their advice and made it plausible, perhaps. Right. And, or is and I, it... Well, that, and that's the thing. I guess this is the point. These are, you know, different sites, all sorts of different numbers going on. So it's hard to know, it's hard to know where to look and which you should trust more or less than others. Mm, I'm still very sceptical about this because I put in, um, I tried to use one because my friend was asking me and I thought, well, well, let's try this. And it gave me completely contradictory results depending on which website I was using. And also when I checked with the 2017 results of her constituency, it just, it, it seemed like the result that it was giving me made no sense. Yeah, and this is the point. So some people have now made a sort of meta-tactical voting sites which collate all of the different recommendations and they find there are well over a hundred just on the Remain side where different sites give different recommendations. 
So shall we shall we take a look yeah, at one? Yeah, let's look at one. Let's look at Finchley, mm -hmm. we thought was particularly interesting, right? Yeah, so Finchley and Golders Green. So this is in London. Um, and there's a couple of interesting things about, about this place. Um, one is relatively large Jewish population. And it's, I think, well known that Labour has had some problems there with the ac accusations of anti-Semitism. Mm. And then we have a former Labour MP, Luciana Berger, who who's has, now running for the Lib Dems. Who's now running for the Lib Dems and is a Jewish MP and was born in London. So, so you'd think maybe Lib Dems have a chance. You here. would, but, but again... But if you check the 2017 results, what would you see? So, let's have a look at this. Um, do you want to slap 2017 somewhere and I'll put them next to that? Awesome. So that's a general election. So, yeah, 2017. Um, these blocks, so we're going to say that each of these big ones is 10% of the vote and the little ones are 5%. So what we're looking at there is the 2017 general election result, Finchley and Golders Green, where the Conservatives got about 47% of the vote. Labour would just be on on 43. So it's clearly a hugely marginal constituency. Marginal, marginal constituency, but very much a two-party race, and the Lib Dems only got 6.6%. So anyone looking at those numbers would, of course, think, OK, if I want to prevent the government's Brexit deal going through, then I've got to vote Labour. But let's see what these different sites say. So, if we were to look at the remainunited.org site, so this is associated with so Gina Miller's organisation, you get something a little bit different. So, this is the numbers I'm going to show you here are what they think voting intentions currently are in Finchley and Golders Green. And they so, put this it, is based on polling? Yeah, so they've, they've done a big poll of about 6,000 people across the country and used that to make project, projections for every seat. And they reckon. The Conservatives are still ahead, but on 42% down from 47. Uh, they reckon Labour are on 29 and the Lib Dems on 28. So essentially neck and neck. And, you know, we're talking about a gap there of 13% between the top two, which, if these two, you know, coalesced, could be, could be overturnable. Mm. So the question is, 29, 28, who do you vote for? Then we look at um, getvoting.org. So this is the site in association with Best for Britain. And they go even further. So in that situation, we've got the Conservatives on 40, on 36, sorry. The Lib Dems on 26 and Labour on 25. And what method is that based on? So that's similar to Remain United, but an even larger poll. So they mm -hmm. polled 46,000 people, which meant they had enough to see what See, in That's so, 46,000 across, across the country, not just in that Not just in that constituency. No, that would be crazy, but amazing. That would be um, the whole, <laughs> yeah. whole lot. <laughs> and so two methods here which do a big poll. These were carried out more recently, so sort of October, September, October, November time. So much more up to date than 2017. And they have essentially Labour and Lib Dems neck and neck. And that's not all. If We can then look at the pollster Servation, and Delta poll, and each of these have been doing individual polls in the local area. So, so looking at this, I'm still very confused. If mm -hmm. I had a friend in that constituency, obviously that's not where I live, but I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know what to advise. Right, and, and if we just add in the, the most recent of all of those polls, which is the Delta poll one, it'll just show you how the, the pictures may be changed even more. So they have Conservatives on... 46. This is Delta poll. They've got the Lib Dems, 32. And Labour on 19. Ah, so, that's a bit more clear cut, I suppose. So, yeah, a little bit more clear cut. And then, so they would now be saying this very much, if you want to stop the Tories getting in in this seat, you would vote Lib Dem. Mm. So, yeah, clear as mud. You've, and, and if we look at where these are coming from, so tactical.vote and tacticalvote.co.uk are basing their recommendations mainly on 2017. Um, so Tactical Vote in Finchley would tell you to vote Labour. Remain United and GetVoting.org would both tell you to vote Lib Dem. So it's, it's really not clear. And, yeah. and, and, it, and in the end, you might not be voting with your conscience. Mm -hmm. You just have this one thing in mind and you're being pulled in, in different directions, which is you know, the results that you want. Um, but 
also you you've got to be thinking it's almost like game theory is everyone else going to be tactically voting as well and whose advice are they going to follow and i find that even more confusing because we don't actually know how many people are looking at tactical voting according to one poll it was going to be around 60 percent mm -hmm. and another poll found just six percent and obviously they phrased the question differently so that made a huge impact but uh, on top of that there have been studies that show that actually tactical voting in 10 percent of cases, I think, can be very counterproductive. It, it, can, it can sort of split the vote entirely. Exactly, yeah. Because if you think about this case, if one person's going to tactical.vote, just because maybe that's their top result on Google, and the other goes to one of the other sites, then you've got two people who both think they're voting to prevent the Tories getting a majority, mm. but they end up voting for different parties, and so the vote is even more split. There are, however, like some substantial ways in which these sites are doing things differently. So for me, and, and you know, we're not going to say one of these sites is great and the others, others are bad and that kind of thing, but I think you can think about these sites differently. So tactical.vote and tacticalvote.co.uk are mainly basing their, um, their recommendations on 2017. The getvoting.org and Remain United are basing theirs on these more up-to-date polls and they are both going to be updating their recommendations with new polling data over the next couple of weeks. So for me, I would just say that if the data is recent and if the data is specialised for that local area, such as the stuff from Get Voting and Remain United, that's probably going to be give me the best idea Mm. Of, of who my best choice And be. I would also say check the sample size in the survey mm -hmm. to make sure that it's the most accurate one. Yeah, exactly. So if we look at the Delta Poll and Servation local surveys, they surveyed a few hundred voters. And sure, a constituency is smaller than the country, so you don't necessarily need to survey a thousand people. But it means the error margins on these numbers are big. So again, if you're trying to work out who's second and who's third, and they're close to one another, it essentially means we don't really know. Mm. So what? So you, your friends have been texting you. What advice have you been giving them? Uh, I'm going to be a bit of a politician and swerve this question a little bit. I sort of answered tactically, as it were. So in one case, it was a marginal constituency, but it was kind of there was a consensus across the different websites, and the 2017 result showed that there was a consensus there. So that was really easy. In the case where it was really difficult to make a decision, I just sort of told my friend, "Well, check the candidates." see what their policies are, see what you care the most about, you know, the sort of old school yeah. way of voting Vote in an election. Yeah. 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 So you could do both, I suppose. So, yeah, I guess, you know, good luck to all the tactical voters out there and yeah. see what happens on the night of December the 12th. Let's see who wins amongst these websites. Indeed. <laughs>